All right, ladies and gentlemen, today we get to tackle one of my favorite topics of the year, and that is uh, polynomial long division. Okay, so what we're going to have to do first is we're going to have to do a quick recap of numerical long division. Okay, if you fully remember how to do numerical long division, quickly just do both of these problems, check your answers, and then move on. Okay, if you don't, you may want to follow along with me. Okay, so uh, I'm going to do this first example. Remember, your denominator goes outside this little, I don't know, symbol. Uh, and then we put our numerator inside. And then all we're doing is we're doing the same thing over and over again. We're asking, okay, how many times does 11 go into whatever number we've got uh, under our symbol? And then write that number on top, multiply, subtract. Okay, so here's how that looks. How many times does 11 go into 1? It doesn't, so we skip it. How many times does 11 go into 12? One time. Then we multiply the 1 and the 11, get 11. Then we subtract, we get 1. We bring down our next number, and we repeat the same process now with the new number we have. We have 13. 11 goes into 13 one time. 1 times 11 is 11. Subtract, we get 2. Bring down the next number. We get 4. 11 goes into 24 twice. Right, the 22 down here, because 11 times 2 is 22. Subtract, we get 2. Bring down the next number, you get 5. Okay, you can kind of see where this is going. Uh, let's keep going. Then we get 2 again. Multiply, 22. Subtract, we get 3. Bring down the last number, which is 6. It goes in three times this time. I'm going to kind of move my work up here because I ran out of room. And we have a remainder of 3. And what you do with remainders is you make them into a fraction. So that means we have 3 elevenths left over because we were dividing by 11. So our answer is 11,223 and 3 elevenths. Okay. Um, I'm going to skip that second example uh, in order to keep this video a little bit shorter. Okay, So the purpose of polynomial long division is for times where factoring might not be a possibility. Here, let me show you a quick example. Okay, So let's say I had x squared plus 2x minus 3 over x plus 3. If I wanted to si simplify this expression, the easy thing that I could do is factor the numerator And then I could cancel with things in the denominator, and I would get x minus 1. Boom. But what happens if you can't actually factor the numerator? Right? Well, if you can't factor the numerator, but you still want to try to simplify the expression, your next best option is polynomial long division. Okay? Uh, or maybe you just want to divide the polynomials, and you don't care if they actually divide into something nice. You want to see exactly what they divide into, because these can have remainders too. So here's how polynomial long division works. The setup is the exact same. So x minus 6 goes on the outside. My numerator goes on the inside. Okay, now... Uh, Here's the diff, one of the differences. I only really focus on how many times this first term goes into that first term. That's all I'm looking for there. I'm not really looking, I don't really worry about the 6. That's kind of an afterthought. If it happens to work out nicely, great. If it doesn't, oh well. So when I say how many times does x go into x cubed, what I really mean is, I'm kind of asking this question. x times what gets me x cubed? Well, I know that's x squared, so I write that up here. Now, I multiply x squared times my x minus 6. I get x cubed minus 6x. I write that underneath. We should know what happens next. It's the same thing as with regular long division. We subtract. I like to put parentheses around this just so I you know, don't forget that I'm subtracting both of those terms. So x cubed minus x cubed is nothing. That should happen. If that does, didn't happen, that means you did something wrong the step before. Negative 3x squared minus a negative 6x squared.
squared is positive 3x squared. My next step was bring down the next number. Well, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to bring down negative 23x, and I'm going to repeat the process again. So now I'm asking myself x times what? Because, again, I'm really still only worried about this term equals 3x squared. Well, this time it's plus 3x. Now I multiply. I get 3x squared minus 18x. Again, I am subtracting. I get nothing for the first one, and I get negative 5x for the second one, and I bring down my plus 30. Again, one more time, I am asking myself x times what gets me negative 5x. That's a pretty easy one. It's just negative 5. I multiply, and I'm barely going to be able to fit this in here, but I'll get it in there. I get negative uh, 5x plus 30. I'm going to subtract, and I'm going to get 0, so I have no remainder. So when I divide these two things, I get x squared plus 3x minus 5. Pretty cool, huh? Uh, now, again, if I could have figured out a way to factor that x cubed expression, uh, you know, perhaps I could have saw that, oh yeah, they both have an x minus 6 in them and canceled that out, but uh, polynomial long division in this case is probably a lot more efficient. Okay, uh, I'm going to have you guys try both of the next two. Uh, for B, though, I'm going to show you the setup. The setup here is actually not too tricky, but there's a little bit of a trick to it. Uh, and the little bit of a trick is that if you don't have uh, certain terms in there, like I don't have an x squared term, even though I'm starting with x cubed, you're going to want to fill in some zeros for the missing terms. Okay, really they're just little placeholders, but uh, it makes your life a whole lot easier when you do that. So uh, why don't you just try this one out for now, pause, and then come back. Okay, I'm going to go through this one a little bit quicker. Uh, x times x squared gets me x cubed. Multiply, I get x cubed plus 3x squared. Subtract, I get negative 3x squared. Bring down my 0x and do it again. Now I get uh, negative 3x. I multiply and I get uh, negative 3x squared minus 9x. Remember, I am subtracting, so I end up with a plus 9x. Bring down the 27. Again, I get 9. I get 9x plus 27, and I get no remainder, which is awesome. Uh, what I want you to quickly kind of look at is my answer, this, and this, what I started with. There's a relationship between those three polynomials. If you can see what it is, that's pretty cool. If not, maybe that's something to discuss in your group tomorrow. Okay, uh, last one. Okay, here we go. Uh, again, pause and try this one on your own and then come back and check those results. All right, again, I'm going to go through this one a little bit quicker. So if you are struggling, you know, definitely come talk to me about it. Okay, so we get 5x squared multiply 5x squared plus 20x. Oops, sorry, that's cute. Subtract, I get negative 13 negative uh, 13x squared. Bring down the negative 3x. I need to multiply by negative 13x to get those to match. Uh, 13 times 4 is 52. So I get negative uh, 52x. Uh, subtract those and I get 49 x, bring down the 8, 
I have to multiply by 49 to get those to match. This is going to have a crazy large remainder. Uh, so I get 49x here and 49 times 4, just for fun, easy way to do that, do 50 times 4 and then take away 4. So it's uh, 196. Uh, subtract those and we get uh, negative 188. So what I do with my remainder, it's really easy. I still need to add a plus symbol and then I do negative 188 over x plus 4. And that's really it. Okay, so uh, using the remainders isn't really too challenging here. Uh, that's polynomial long division for you guys. Uh, hopefully, I don't know, hopefully you guys find it as fun and exciting as I do.